to stay involved and get participate in local good government. I don't think there's any anything more transparent or, or, or elected official government working than the local government. So I was just killing some time until we get one more council member in here. Is he, he's coming? All right. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, call this meeting to order. Today is Thursday, October the 24th, 2024. It's 6 o'clock p.m. and all public notices have been sent out. So this is an official meeting of the Livingston Parish Council. Uh, as our custom, and we do a pretty good job of it, uh, we start off with an invocation, and today Mr. Ryan Shavers has the invocation. Hey, Ben, there's a, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Colonel Deputy LPSO, Mr. Perry Rushing, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, well, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. To get started, Ms. Sandy, would you call the roll to make sure we have a quorum here tonight? Mr. Artie? Here. Mr. Coates? Here. Mr. Mangus? Here. Mr. Watts? Here. Mr. Wascom? Here. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Goff? Here. Mr. Shavers? Here. Ms. Sandifer? Here. All right. Next item is uh, standing item, public input. If anyone wishes to speak or address John. any. John. Oh. Before we get started, um, there is, with the council meeting, we are, we have a public hearing to hold before we actually get started with the parish council meeting. This public hearing is, is uh, basically a, a redo of one of the tax millages that we had done a couple weeks ago, just a clerical error that we'd missed. So we're just, to make sure we dot the I's across the T's. Miss Sandy, you want to read this by time? Are we doing... Are doing both of them at the same time or one at a time? Uh, is the other one on the agenda? Okay. We'll do it when it comes up then. Is that if it? Because it's, it's first. Okay. Well, let's do them both then. Okay. I'm gonna read them both. The uh, first one is proposed ordinance 24-29. It's an ordinance to adopt an immediate moratorium prohibiting the consideration or submittal of any preliminary plats for residential developments in Council District 2, creating more than five lots for a period of six months or the adoption of a comprehensive new zoning program, whichever comes first. The second one is proposed ordinance. LP 24-30. This is an ordinance to amend LP ordinance 24-16 adopted on September 19, 2024 to levy adjusted millage rates after reassessment and roll forward the millage rates not to exceed the prior year's maximum rate for the tax year 2024. So this is going from the adjusted millage rate of 1.88 to levy for 2024 at 1.5. All right, so these two public hearings will come up during the council meeting as well. I mean, just we'll give, if you'll have a chance speak. to speak, that's all I'm saying. So, but we're required by law. If anyone has anything to speak for or against these specific items right now would be your chance to officially to speak for or against these two meetings. So I declare the public hearing open. None being here to speak. All right, close the public hearing. We'll move forward with the Livingston Parish Council meeting now. Uh, we've called the roll. Check your cell phones if you don't mind to make sure there's no major interruptions. And we'll have public input on any item if someone wishes to speak on a specific item. And if, if that time comes and you do speak, please try to limit your conversation and your comments to three minutes. And then if two or three people speak, try not to repeat something that's been said so we can just be efficient and move through the meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, let's jump down real quick. This is another timely thing that we've got to got to get this ordinance done tonight, and we've got to still got to get it signed by the parish president. Let's jump to item 15 so we can knock this one out real fast. 
an ordinance to amend Livingston Parish Ordinance 24-16 on September the 19th, 2024 to levy the adjusted millage rates after reassessment and roll forward the millage rates not to exceed the prior year's maximum rate for 2024 in regard to the Livingston Parish Health Unit Millage Key. 008 adjusted millage of 1.88. Uh, Mr. Ricky Goff had done a really good job to uh, I think it's rolling back from 188 to 1 1.5. Is that correct, Mickey? Uh, 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 Ricky? That's correct. Um, so, do I think, is there some more art about that ordinance you need to read by title, Sandy, or was what I said sufficient? That's fine. And uh, again, we've all adopted this, but there was just a clerical error that we needed to change. So, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Motion by Mr. Uh, Mangus. Is there a second by Mr. Ricky Goff? Is there any more discussion? None being from the audience, any from the council? Ms. Sandy, you want to call for the vote? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Wascombe? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Mr. Shavers? Yes. Ms. Sanderford? Yes. Thank you so much. Now, if y'all can get that signed up whenever y'all ready. Item nine is adopt the minutes of the october 10th 2024 regular meeting i know the email has come in i've been able to look for them they look fine to me does anyone have any questions or if not is there a motion to adopt those minutes motion by mr mangus second by <coughs> mr lonnie watts any discussion all in favor say yes yes, yes. yes. is there any opposed none that motion carried unanimous um item 10 under parish president's report we have uh, two items. Uh, um, 11A would be to adopt a resolution authorizing the parish president to execute an, an amendment to the cooperative endeavor agreement between Livingston Parish Council and the Livingston Parish Sewer District to add an additional $1.5 million in ARPA funding for various sewer projects as noted in LPR 24-4242. And this was adopted on June 27, 2024, undertaken by the Livingston Parish Sewer District. It's a great thing when we can use, uh, you get free money to improve quality of life by improving sewer in the parish. So, do you have anything else to comment on that, Randy? Or is there just, you want a motion regarding this, Mickey? No, I just, if anyone, ha no one has any questions, uh, you have a question, Mr. Shavers? Go ahead. Um, what, what are the, do we know what they're going to use the money for? specifically yes sir and mr eddie idol is here too he can speak on that but the resolution that was in your packet it, there's a list of projects there and so it was any of those projects that they were going to put the money toward mm -hmm. um so from my understanding is they had to have a contract yes, sir. um they have caught they is our contract with them with this money is that what you're saying is the co our cooperative endeavor agreement is with the Livingston Parish sewer district and they themselves entered into construction contracts with various contractors so they've done all their bidding work and everything on their side okay mm -hmm. um, what do we know what the remainder of the money is going to be used for mr. Eddie you want to touch on that so what you know you, you guys know that you have a deadline looming and what we agreed to do was to dedicate these funds toward projects that were already completed some of the funds the re the balance of the funds are going toward uh, a force main project well one of them was the Dunn Road force main project the uh, Buddy Ellis Regional Plant Force Main Project, and I can't remember which other one, Miss Heather. Okay, it was just those two. Uh, so, in order to comply with that deadline we decided to, we were going to use it on the main station at the plant and just to give you guys a little history there was about 50 million dollars worth of sewer projects that the sewer district had taken a bond out to uh, complete within the district uh, back in 2021 the district agreed to take over those four plants in the Springfield area 
And when they did, we did an analysis and we came up with about $3.5 million of immediate repairs that needed to be done just to try to, to attempt to get them into compliance with their discharge permits. So this is money that you're recouping or this is money? This is, this is money that the district is recouping for projects that they already had those bond monies dedicated toward because what they did is they're actually taking four and a half million dollars out of that fifty million dollar bond and they're dedicating it to match the water sector funds that we secured to build a new regional plant uh, for all for the four plants that the parish had plus the, uh, the the village of Springfield we're actually taking their sewer system taking their plant offline and sending it all to that regional treatment plant so you know the sewer district is actually committing four and a half million dollars of their bond money that was dedicated to other projects and in consideration for that the parish is giving them three back okay. so that's in a nutshell that's what it is and like miss heather said there was 12 projects that was to be funded with that 50 million dollars so that's that's what the agreement basically yeah entails. i see one of them on here was the four road um i worked with my appointment with the living yes, sir, and that's that correct. finally got finally resolved. got done it yeah like everything else you know everything takes longer than it yep i'm should with you. nowadays so i guess this is my question for mr mickey what is the remainder of the arpa money going to be used for if we have a deadline so the remainder of the arpa money which had been presented to you before which is about one point <clears throat> one point nine million so unlike this this th this particular case would that was approved by a prior council so it's sort of like a capital outlay budget i mean that money was already dedicated um mr randy had asked if we could try to find money elsewhere mr idell tried and it was just not enough time to to uh to make that happen so you know as the the deadline approaches then then we had to to do something so that's why we present it to you tonight so you should so, have roughly 500,000 left over I'm gonna just say 2 million you said 1.9 I'm gonna say 2 million you are giving them 1.5 so that should leave about $500,000 left give or take no no that, it's 1.9 I've already factored in the the uh, the 3 million for the sewer district yeah oh I got you yeah okay so so 1.9 is the 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 un, unallocated portion okay uh, of the money that's understand yeah understand um so I, i've talked to aaron about it with this the arpa money and from what i'm told and she can correct me if i'm wrong but she's got shovel ready projects um that could <clears throat> use some funding on in her district and i'm not going to speak for her but um aaron do you want to so I, I did speak with um, some of our state legislators and two million it's my understanding that two million is needed to complete the cook road project um and that's got to be parish money we are two million short and uh we 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 the money we've been using for cook road is comes out of dpw money which um we've used transportation trust funds for that in the past so so we we're okay on 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 that match for cook road so we have the two million from from us to to meet it to complete it um i have a i believe we've already um paid that so yes um we, so we've paid that yeah we, we paid okay our match, okay yeah. i didn't know that yeah i, I was a lot of the match came from the bridge you know yeah I, I believe we just just recently we it was quite a quite a large check for for cook road but we've we spent substantial amount of money on cook road out of our match because that bridge portion uh was was going to be our match and that's where they at right now is on the on that bridge portion so they're not short cook is, is we we are not short no okay that Paris was, isn't short yeah okay yeah i would like to ask mr chairman that we keep on the agenda and the agenda that we're speaking on now is the item that's the listed. sewer yeah we can, sewer. We that's can. fine i mean we do have a we have uh yeah i guess we're talking about the uh 
uh, the corporate endeavor yeah, agreement modern. for the uh, ARPA, um, and then I think we got off on what's the remaining balance. So I, maybe that. Well, is I, th I think yeah. for me, I have to a ask these questions so that I can have an educated vote on what I'm voting for, so that I know where the remaining money is going, what it's being used for, and specifically for this agenda item. So that's why I asked that question. Understand. And to stay true to the agenda, uh -huh. I was looking at reallocating this money or making a, uh, an amendment to the motion to dedicate it to Cook Road. So it was relevant. It, it's not because you don't have the authority to make an amendment to the budget, okay? It has to be a surplus certified. You already voted on the budget. You already had your opportunity. You're going to have another opportunity when we make an amendment to the budget. That amendment to the budget is not on this agenda. You cannot, you cannot amend the budget when you want to. The budget can be amended when I certify a surplus. It's in your charter, page 20, section 5-04. It's underlined. All right, well, is there any more questions, Mr. Ryan? That being, all right, is there a motion to authorize the parish president to enter our corporate Geoffrey so we can get this sewer project moving? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Ricky Goff, second by Mr. John Mangus. Is there any more discussion? Uh, Ms. Caroline or Ms. Raven, you want to call for the vote? Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Taylor's absent. Mr. Goff? Yes. Mr. Shavers? Yeah. And Ms. Sandifer? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Item B under the parish president's report adopt a resolution authorizing the parish president to negotiate and enter into a contract or contracts to accept funding for Livingston Parish with the State of Louisiana Division of Administration Office of Community <laughs> Development uh, on terms, conditions that deem advisable to, to execute said document on behalf of Livingston Parish during the term of the Corporate Endeavor Agreement giving the parish president the power and authority to do all things necessary to implement, maintain, amend, or renew said contract, and to accept any grants on award uh, on behalf of the Livingston Parish in regard to applying for federal disaster for $20 million to the Office of Community Development, and this is for the Edmund River Basin Commission, Region 9. Uh, did you have any input on that, Ms. Heather? <clears throat> just a quick clarification what this resolution's for yes sir. I know that's a lot of words but basically that is just a lot of words just to administer grant funding for an application that we're submitting for the Amy River settlement removal project which is going to be funded by the Office of Community Development so it is essentially HUD funding federal funding and this is a requirement that they're asking us to do to submit our application a resolution which just gives Mr. Randy authority to sign any and all documents related to the grant so cooperative endeavor agreements if he has to sign off on environmentals um, procurement of course we always come to you with procurement as a practice that we do so you will always see that but this just allows him to do the administration of the grant I understand all right is there a, any is there a motion to approve this motion by mr. Mangus second, second by mr. Lonnie Watts is there any discussion mr. Coates I would like a little bit of clarification on this because this seems like we're giving away a lot of authority and I just want to make sure if we are or are not doing that when it says a parish president has the power and authority to do all things necessary to implement, maintain, amend, and or renew the uh, said documents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, <clears throat> as what was just said, you know, y'all always come back to the council with these things, but with us giving this authority, it appears to me that we will be given a, a tremendous amount of authority and not have to come back to the, to the council. And what would that be, Mr. Coates, specifically? What is that specifically that you're giving me authority for to administrate a grant? Is that what you said? That's, that's what the agenda says, but you said something else. I didn't else. say anything. I was asking a question. Well, I'm asking the same question. You, I, asked, you called up here to clarify, so ask me a question what you want me to clarify. So what I want to clarify is it says to give the uh, parish president the powers and authority to do all things necessary to implement, maintain, amend, or renew the said documents and to accept any grant awards on behalf of the parish president, which I understand that there, uh, and to apply for the federal grants and all that. So we do not currently have this grant, is that correct? Uh, I'm sorry, I had some more to my yes. What, what you asked? 
You so we so. do not currently have this grant. What you're asking for is permission to seek this grant? This, this grant is promised to Lipston Parish, so you have to administrate the grant. You don't have to legislate it. So to administrate the grant, I have to sign documents like I sign every day. The grant came through hard work from uh, Ms. Cindy O'Neill, and it also came through a, a coalition working with Ascension Parish President Clint Como, e EBR Fred Rayford, John uh, from Abelia Parish, and Pete from St. James. That's 20 million that's coming to Livingston Parish out of the remaining 70 million that's left. We're gonna need $45 million to complete the project, but 20 million would make such a big significance, would make the biggest significance in Livingston Parish drainage ever in the history. We wanna, we, we still applying for the other 45 million. We're gonna have 20 million in our hand as soon as we can sign the paperwork. HUD, has it's a HUD grant like the uh, grant uh, administrator told you a while ago HUD has certain rules that you have to do every other day they change those rules and you got to sign more documents it's, all this is time sensitive and I really realize that there's two or three council members that want to be past president but there's only one past president there's only one guy that's going to be in charge of administration okay and that's the executive staff until y'all quit playing these games, the people's gonna suffer. Any other questions, Mr. Coates? Yes, sir. And the reason, there, there are no games being played. I'm well, trying to see yes, clarification. There are games being right, let's played try by to you. stay focused here. So, Let, let's just try to keep it focused. <clears throat> Mr. Coates, you have so, any more questions? Yes, I do. So it also says uh, to negotiate and enter into the contracts and accept funding, which I understand all that part of that, uh, what it's saying. Mr. Coates, what you don't understand, just tell us that part. Well, I'm trying to get to that if you'd quit interrupting, sir. Well, I, you had me 10 minutes here and you ain't asked a question yet. I did ask a question. Which, which question? Come on. All, right, all right, we're not going to continue ahead. this. Uh, I'm done. Go ahead. You I'm finished? Done. Yes, I'm done. All right, is there any more questions? I have some Ms. questions. Um, did LWI approve this grant? Have they approved this money? Have you this came from the Mid River Basin. This is not an LWI grant. I think they have to, don't they have to give their permission what? to do this? They have to sign off on this. What they, they have, have to, to grant sign it. off. They we already, we already been. We're making application right now to the LWI. We're making application. Okay, so they haven't yet. approved it yet. Yeah, this is okay. one step we have to submit for them to approve it. They're requiring a board resolution. Thank you very much. Um, also, can I amend the motion and make it to, uh, subject to council approval once we are granted that so i guess you're saying I mean, you want to authorize me to do it subject to council approval uh well i don't i you know i'm not really comfortable with we don't even know if we have it and yet we're given all of the council authority away to be able to what is the deal council with authority? it well i guess the motion is to the authorize is. the parish president to go get the grant i mean you know this it, is typical with other yeah I, I don't i mean i don't i guess i don't understand but there's what, no games being played John. what's your motion yeah i don't understand what your what well, your amendment okay well i'll mean? retract it my my concern is um if we're grant if we receive the grant then what happens with the 20 million dollars does it come back before the council and we get to uh, look at will, this when they uh, clear us to start procurement i will come back to y'all to say hey are y'all good with hiring this environmental consultant are y'all good with this contractor we'll do all the procurement and bring it to you I for see. a recommendation okay to accept. and one okay, more piece of information so the grant didn't they didn't just call up lives in Paris said we want to give you a 20 million dollar grant that ain't the way that worked okay we worked hard on that in addition we have met several times with the complete uh, congressional district, with the Senate district, with the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the Colonel. We have also allocated $4 million for the permitting process it is. And this process is, includes environmental and engineering. Even if you get the grant, you can't do the work until that $5 million Permitting permit is, done, is here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a process, guys. Every day we got to do something. And it just makes it so frustrating to come up here. And, and That's all right. Uh, is there any, any more? Uh, is, there a, is there a motion to adopt, or did you want to make one with amended, or just? No. Is there a motion to adopt a resolution? 
John Mangus made the motion, and I think Mr. Hook, Mr. Golf Mr. seconded. Is no. there any more discussion then from the council on this specific item? Ms. Raven, you want to call? Lonnie seconded. Yeah, Lonnie seconded. Lonnie seconded. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Ms. Raven, you want to call for the vote? Yes. Mr. Erty? No. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Goff? You'll never hear me turn down $20 million. <laughs> <Answer yes. laughs> Mr. Shavers? Yes. And Ms. Sandifer? Yes. Mr. Right. Chairman, on the President's report. Uh, we did get a copy of that, by the way, Randy. I do want to recognize Ms. Linda Gidry. That said, uh, I don't think you got the first, the last copy of that. Uh, actually, I, I did get it. I don't okay. have it here, right here with me, but it has a list of all. Did you want to run through it? Yeah, if you please let me run Go through ahead. that. Uh, underneath the President's report, and if you allow me to do this in future meetings, I would like to do the same thing. Sure, with that's fine. Underneath the President's report, the first item is litter abatement. Uh, we attended uh, in Baton Rouge, uh, <coughs> Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungrasser, where he gave an award to Livingston Parish and Miss Linda Gardner. We had our staff there, had a good turnout. Uh, Miss Erin Sandifer was also there representing the parish. We, underneath animal control, we want to mention that we are fully capacity. We're getting a lot of calls to pick up dogs. We don't have any more capacity. Anyone that can help us with any adoption or anything like that is be greatly appreciated. In Public Works, we continue to pick up debris from the hurricane. We had two debris, debris trucks running since the storm. We're switching to our online work order system to make us more efficient. In addition, at Public Works, we installed a bridge tim on a wooden, wooden bridge on Charlie Watts Road, and we graded school bus turnarounds, and we're continuing on our maintenance program. The grants, we up here working the grants through the, we submitted the drainage master plan application to submit to OCD on October the 22nd, 24th. That grants is going to be funded soon where we can start that work. The animal shelter construction project is currently in the bidding process. Bids is going to be open on November 13, 2024. We submitted the Amid River Sediment Removal Application for $20 million through the Louisiana Watershed Initiative Portal. And that's what Ms. Aaron was asking a while ago. We uh, submitted applications for new LED lighting for the Register of Voters Buildings and the District Attorney's Building. We, uh, EECBG equipment rebate grant was approved for $79,590. The LGAP 2023-24 funding for the animal shelter, we received $30,000. We uh, SHSP 2024 and the EMPG 2024 funding agreements were announced. At the Office of Emergency Preparations, we still work on ID cards and property control. We completely we completed the security upgrades to the entire building. We're working on a new approved PA and projects to include. We just got, I forgot to mention earlier, the Lodge Stafford Bridge just got approved this week, uh, Lonnie. Uh, yeah, finally. And uh, the other thing, we finalizing the 2025 copy of the Parish All Hazards Plan, which DEQ we was out of compliance, and DAQ is giving us a, uh, a, a mandate to finish that with a, a time frame, and we're we just uh, finalizing that. We're working on 2025 grant applications, include getting quotes on equipment, which we will be purchasing with those grant funds. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Delap. Item 12, adoption of LP Ordinance 24-29. This is an ordinance to adopt a six-month moratorium prohibiting the consideration or submittal of any preliminary plat for residential developments in the Council District 2, creating more than five lots. Uh, Mr. Ryan Shavers, I believe this, or this ordinance has already been for introduction, is that correct? And tonight would be the adoption. So yes. um, <clears throat> before we open it up, let's make sure there's a, a motion and a second for adoption. You made the motion, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I make the motion. Motion by Mr. Shavers? I'll second. Second by Mr. Coates. Is there any discussion? Uh, come on up. Give us your name and address, please, or at least where you, what parish you're in, so we can uh, 
and, and listen to the Mr. Mr. Joel. Uh, my name is Joel Rushing. I live at 35031 Newsom Lane in Watson. I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I'm here to ask that you not adopt this ordinance. One of the most important roles of the council, in my opinion, is to ensure the responsible and well-managed growth of our parish. To that end, I would note that there are currently 177 pages of regulations regarding land development, 60 pages alone concerning subdivisions. Per these regulations, any tract of land broken into 10 or more parcels must follow the requirements of a, quote, subdivision with improvements. These requirements include engineering reviews, drainage and traffic impact studies, maintenance bonds, impact fees, and so on. To prevent the circumvention of these requirements via the piecemeal development of land, the parish requires that the, the division of land into nine or fewer parcels can only be done every two years. This is a reasonable approach in my opinion. As I understand it, the proposed ordinance would reduce this limit to five parcels for the next six months after which the nine parcel two year limit would go back into effect. My question is, what is this new restriction intended to accomplish? What issues are not already addressed in almost 200 pages of existing regulations that warrants further restrictions on property owners by the parish? I admit that what first drew my attention to this matter was the original version of this ordinance, which would have had the effect of banning virtually all land transactions in our district for an entire year. This is because any landowner wishing to sell or even donate to his children a portion of their property would have been put in an all or nothing situation due to the prohibition against subdividing any tract of land into smaller parcels. The fact that this was even considered is very concerning to me. I'm personally aware of an elderly person requiring full-time care whose net worth is in the form of land passed down for generations. Recently this person sold a piece of that property to cover the cost of their care. The original moratorium, had it been in place, would have had devastating consequences to this individual. I understand that the proposed ordinance tonight concerns a watered-down version of the ordinance. But the question remains, what is the purpose of this moratorium? These sweeping blanket ordinances have impacts that probably aren't fully understood, like the one I just cited. To me, unless there is a compelling reason for this new restriction that is not already addressed in almost 200 pages of Paris regulations, I would submit that it is not necessary and it is merely an infringement on the basic private property rights of individuals in this district. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, is there any more comments from the audience? None being, is there any comments from the council, Mr. Shavers? Did you want to, you had a motion, I believe in a second, to adopt the moratorium? Yeah. None being, uh, none from the council? Ms. Raven, you want to call for the vote? Mr. Uh, Erdy. Oh, oh, hold on, Ricky. I'm, I'm sorry, I had one. Uh, so. You're a little slow there, buddy. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm trying to stay quiet. Um, so I want to make sure, and I'm, I was looking for it, but this goes from nine lots down to four? No, five? this is All right, goes for down subdividing down. five lots or less you can, five lots or more you can. Okay. And the reason for it is because I've had some phone calls from people calling me saying there's mobile homes popping up, there's people buying property, subdividing it, where I feel zoning wouldn't allow for that. So I just said, let's halt, five lots or less, you can, no problem, hardship, you can, no problem, um, until zoning is set into effect. Now, we've had updates from zoning, from Jerome and everybody, and zoning is set to, interim zoning is set to be in, in December. So really, I'm not even asking for the full six months. I'm just asking, let's just halt a little bit. Let's get the zoning adopted, the interim zoning at a minimum, and then we'll lift it, which is in two months. So the other question I have for there, when it, when I, as I understand it, it's stated, it just says six months. It doesn't say. I no, can, it is until zoning is in uh, effect. And or until zoning comes in effect. Correct. I don't know that that was, I didn't read it. <clears throat> so that's my fault. But um, okay. Um, that, that's fine. Um, 
I know we discussed it before about the one that you referred to, and I agree 100%. We have enough to handle development as a whole until we get ordinances in place. And one of the biggest problems we have is nine lots or less with no improvements. I will be putting the rest of that together, as you mentioned at the last meeting, and also trying to bring back the family petition to allow the, the family owners that need to do what they need to do, the opportunity to do that. Why that got taken out, I'm not real sure. But to give you an understanding of kind of what that's gonna look like is you're gonna have nine or 12 lots, but it will be with improvements. You will be required to put a blacktop road on there that you can either give over to the parish or keep yourself. You will not be required you may be asked to do a drainage impact study, but basically you will do a drainage plan, and that plan will tell us where that water is going to be going to, and then also give the gravity drainage district or the parish a servitude of access to take care of those drainage canals or ditches or whatever it is that is put in to that home or that, that development. So in my world, nine lots or less without any improvements is not a healthy subdivided property for someone to sell property off of. But you get stuck in there, a homeowner or a family member gets stuck under that same umbrella because they don't have family petition. So that's why my direction is, and y'all have an opportunity to beat it up, uh, is to move that to 12 lots or less. And the reason going from nine to 12 is to help you pay for the, for the road. I get it, I understand it. So it's to help you pay for the road, but also to give the servitude of drainage to the gravity drainage district where they can go in in the years past, you know, years in, in the future and be able to take care of those people. Um, so- That's a different item than what we're talking about. It, eh, well, it is and it isn't as exactly what he's trying what to solve <laughs> with, in the short term. Okay. But I just want them to understand that Everything that you spoke of is not going to be affected by his ordinance. The homeowners will still be able to subdivide their property, and we're going to fix the other one with no improvements. I agree with that. All right, so we had a motion and a second, and you want to call for the vote, Ms. Raven? Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? No. Mr. Watts? No. Mr. Wascom? No. Mr. Goff? Yes. Mr. Shavers? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. I, I believe that motion carried, okay. Item 13, Board uh, Reappointments Resignations. Item 13A, removal of Francine Smith from the Livingston Parish Library Board, Mr. Shavers. Uh, this is just a removal, I'm not appointing yet. I haven't found the right person. So this is just a removal. Is there a motion? Uh, yes, a motion. I'll, 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 I'll get, is there a motion? Yes, i Is there a the second? Motion. Second by Mr. Dean Coates. You had somebody from the audience? Come on up, if you would. Give us your name and a good close definition of where you, where you live. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Francine Smith. Um, oh, that's you? Yes, it's me. Um, I think I was here two years ago um, when Miss. The lady whose place I took, Miss Henson, was removed, and I asked you to um, keep her. And so here I'm back. I'll probably get emotional again. I'll probably start babbling. Um, <clears throat> I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a longtime resident of Livingston Parish. I joined the National Guard when I was, I think, 20. And when I came home from basic training, it was um, Desert Storm, and my unit was in Baton Rouge, and it was a 239th and Pete Company. And um, gosh, I get nervous. Um, the 39th Company and Pete Company in New Orleans was activated, and they needed volunteers, and they asked for volunteers for my unit. I volunteered to go. I didn't have to go, but I felt um, a sense of duty and responsibility. And um, <clears throat> I went, I wound up, I didn't know where I was going, but I wound up um, in a place where 
Scud missiles were going overhead. People were actually were killed two or three miles from where I was. I guarded um, Iraqi prisoners of war. And to this day, I wouldn't change any of it. I'm very proud of what I, I've done. Um, I graduated from college. I taught school in EBR for uh, 14 years. While I was in EBR, <clears throat> um, I had an incident with a student. Um, she got mad at me and she punched me a couple of times in the head. And um, I had to have seven stitches and uh, I had blood spraying everywhere. And it was a very traumatic incident. Um, I went on um, what I call it, assault leave for a couple of weeks for the rest of the school year. I could still be on assault leave right now, all these years later, but I felt a desire to contribute to society and to make a difference. And I went back to teaching. And um, I wound up coming out here to Livingston Parish, and of all the schools that I could have taught at, I chose to teach at um, Pine Ridge, which is the school for um, kids who make bad choices. And I only meant to come to get my foot in the door, but you know those kids have touched my heart, and you know a lot of them are good kids. They just make bad choices. Um, some of them though come from bad home environments you know and they have um, a lot of trauma and i feel a duty to stay there i could retire i have almost 30 years um, but i probably won't retire because i feel like those kids need me and you know i have work to do and i feel the same way about the library and i know i'm not going to change anybody's mind but i want it known that I didn't do anything wrong, and I don't appreciate the way that um, some things were characterized on Facebook. Now, I do want to say what happened. Um, I'm sure everybody knows who it is, but I'm not going to name her. The um, public official, um, there was a public official that came to a meeting in July, and after the meeting, she made some inflammatory comments about some board members, me included, about the way that we voted, you know, and suggested that we should be removed. And I know, because Mr. Shavers told me, that she has been pushing to have me removed for months. I don't even know her. I haven't done anything wrong, you know. And I know all of you know what I'm talking about. You make choices every day. When you come here, and some of these people don't like the decisions that you make and they get on Facebook and they make negative comments, but they don't know the whole story. They don't know everything that's going on. They don't know what's going on behind the scenes and they don't know probably how you struggle to make decisions that you think are in the best interest of the people. And, <clears throat> you know, this official made inflammatory comments and people were making all these negative comments. And it's very hurtful and I know you know and um, she's been trying to get me removed. And then recently, there was this organization, Citizens for New Louisiana, that made a post that was highly inflammatory and incendiary. You know, and it was a complete mischaracter <clears throat> mischaracterization of what went on at our last board meeting. All we did was vote to table an agenda item. I could not get any information about what my fellow board member was trying to get accomplished, all he would say was asked and answered, asked and answered. And if you were there, you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. And so all I wanted to do was table it. And then Citizens for New Louisiana posted my face and said I voted to keep basically porn in the kids section, which was not what happened. And um, this official spouse made comments about me on Facebook saying I, could be, I should be removed. And so instead of getting in a Facebook fight, I sent him a private message. And was I sassy? Maybe a little bit. Was I overly direct? I don't think so, because everything I said, I meant. And then I got confused because he said something that led me to believe that I was speaking to the official. And then I said, well, good. Well, I have your ear. Let me know. Let me tell you what I think about what you've been doing. 
and I laid it out the ways that I was disappointed in their performance and at the end of it he went on and made some really ugly and nasty comments about me he said I was a speck of crap on the bottom of his shoe you know that I had never accomplished anything and um, I was petty and jealous which you know I have spent a lifetime doing the hard things you know because I feel like you know somebody has to I don't get paid a lot of money my husband I don't know if you know who he is he's the um, girls basketball coach at Denton Springs High School we don't make any money okay and so I work really hard I help him coach I'm an assistant girls basketball coach at Denton Springs High School um, and like I said I work at Pine Ridge and I'm I've started to babble I'm sorry I'm done thank you so much for your time okay thank you so much um, we had, a we had a motion in a second. Is there anyone else? If you would, try to keep it to three minutes. And give, give us your name and address, please. My name is Cheryl Lass. I'm a retired educator for the parish, 36 years. I also, in the private sector, a retired eight-year president of the retired teachers of Livingston Parish. Uh, I've subbed for Mr. Shaver's sister. I taught Mr. Coates' children at uh, at uh, PSR, and I'm here on behalf of her. I, I want to know why y'all keep wanting to get rid of the educated people that are on the library board. Mr. Waska, when we had our um, suburban, I'm also a member of the suburban uh, book club in Denham Springs, you promised when they tried to remove Kathy DeGeneres, you wouldn't do that. She's a retired educator from Denham Springs High School. I'm nervous to speaking in front of y'all. That's okay. But um, all these people have degrees. They know what they're doing. People don't monitor what their kids do on those phones daily, what games they're playing on those things. But oh, if you have a fit over the library, the libraries, we've come so far. Ascension Parish is ahead of us building a $10 million library. The kids, the books are put up. Have y'all been in there? The children's sections where they're at. They are monitored. They watch what they do with those libraries. Ms. Parrish does an excellent job. Everybody that's in those libraries knows what they're doing. We have our monthly meetings there for, you know, a lot of that. And it just appalls me. Why do you want to get rid of them? Why do you want to remove them? Hold on. Go ahead and finish yeah. before I mean, you die. I mean, you, can you answer? Because a lot of the book club members want to know and the educators want to know why they want to get rid of educated people at the board. That's what we want to know. If you could answer that Thank for you. us. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll answer the questions. Is there any more comments? None. Oh, we have one more. And another more. Okay. After Ms. Marla. Come on up. I'm Marla Elsie, Denham Springs, District 3, Mr. Taylor's District. Um, I was going to speak on behalf of Fran, but she did a much better job speaking about herself than I could have ever. Um, this is the fourth library board removal in three months. I mean, that's ridiculous. Y'all never treated any other board like this. And then people will say, oh, well, we're not out to get the library. But it sure looks like you're out to get the library. I mean, that's what it feels like. So apparently Ms. Smith had a private conversation with somebody that didn't sit well with whoever, unnamed people. <clears throat> and apparently that private conversation is enough to get somebody's knickers in a twist. It was a private conversation. What about public conversations? What about public conversations in a library board where Mr. McMorris has to stand up and tell another library board member that they're being disrespectful to the other library board members? What about public conversations in the legislative chambers where a hearing has to be stopped to tell somebody that they're not being respectful to the other legislative members? You know, what about Tulane's First Amendment Law Clinic having to send letters to the board to point out that the way a certain library board member is speaking to the public is crossing the lines in, in towards public intimidation? Those are public conversations that nobody seems to care about. They happen all the time. They're disrespectful. They're a terrible representation of this parish, and that's allowed to continue. But one conversation in private, and you want to kick her off the board? That's ridiculous. <clears throat> the last time y'all had a meeting about this, that I came up here and spoke, at the end of it, Mr. Manga said something to the audience. And by the way, thank you for our conversation. I really appreciate that. 
But the last time we talked about this, you said to the audience, you said if you really care about this, if you really care about these things, you need to be out there, you need to run for office yourself. And I agree 100%. Uh, I respect what y'all do, and it takes a lot of guts to run for office. And I would do it if I could, but for some of us, we can't. My employer forbids it. I am not allowed to run for public office. So it's not an option for all of us. So our option is that we get to come in and elect y'all. We elect y'all and we count on you to do the right thing. And tonight, doing the right thing is leaving Fran Smith on this board. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Paula. We had, let, let's got one more, then we'll, we'll shut it down after this, if that's okay. If you would, try to keep it three minutes so we can, we can keep moving. I'll be quick and to the point. Thank you. Give us your name and address, please. Yeah, my name is Jordan Gonzalez. I'm Thank in you. District 5, Aaron's District. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm here today to implore the council to not give in to the mania that has continuously been held out in front of you. To not allow the Library Board of Control to be further stacked in favor of an unpopular and hateful and unwarranted agenda. This is not the will of the people. Francine is more than qualified for this position. She's taken a role, she's taken a role very seriously, has always brought a level head, always making sure to hear all sides. She's an active and outstanding member of our community, a trained professional, someone who's highly educated and has shown nothing but devotion to our community for decades. On top of having a degree in library, and sci library science, she's also a veteran and an educator. I don't see any logical reason to want to replace her other than to further erode reasonable decision making on the board and open up the library to further attacks from hateful groups and outside agitators. The attack on the library has to stop. Our community deserves better than this, so please reconsider this decision. Please, re, uh, please reconsider this decision to remove Francine. Please don't give in to the culture war nonsense for the sake of our library and our community. Thank you. All right, we'll go back to the council and... Yeah, let me... Uh, I... Oh, go ahead, Trey. You wanna let Trey talk? All right, Trey, can you make it quick? I, I said he was the last one, but we'll make yeah, you the last one. I'm letting this on. This is the last one. Go ahead, Trey. Make Trey Cowell, 16417 Kenshin Road. Uh, I'm not, not going to get in on a personal attack or anything with people, and I just want to say this. Uh, whether changing out members is right, wrong, or another, but I want to say two things. Number one, the people that are, that are getting on the board are educated people. Uh, they're people that of, of moral character. They're people of, uh, that are representing this community. So, it, so if you do change somebody, it isn't like you're putting somebody on there that's not representing Livingston Parish and the people of Livingston Parish. Number two, this library's got a problem. If y'all want me to read it to you, I'll, put it, I'll read it to you right now. I was going to wait till November the 19th, but I'll go ahead and read it. This library's got a problem. One way or the other. You want me to take another minute? No, we'd rather wait till the 19th. You want to wait? I, hey, all of you come November 19th. I'm going to read it on record. We'll read the whole book. I got 125 of them. This library's got a problem. Y'all are the people to take care of it. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. All right. Uh, we had a motion and a second. Let, let me answer Mr. Shavers, that go ahead. question. So, yeah, we had a question. Thank yeah. you for mm -hmm. bringing that up. So, Francine is correct. I had been getting a lot of phone calls to have her pulled ever since I got elected. And I didn't bow down to those phone calls. Francine and I talked regularly after library board meetings. They were very good um, conversations. I gave her um, my opinion on things. She gave me her opinion on things. It was very good camaraderie. It was very good conversation between her and I. And one of the things that I did tell her is, you know, just from an opinion standpoint, not from a telling somebody what to do, is don't fall for the Facebook stuff. Because that same post that she mentioned, Citizens for New Louisiana, I was, my picture was next to hers. And so I didn't engage in a negative form on that post. But um, I 100% I believe and know that Francine's heart is in the right place with everything she does from teaching to the library. However, um, I had an elected official reach out to me about some of the messages that were sent to the elected official's husband. I'm not going to get into those. That's not my business. If, if she wants to put those out there, that's, that's her 
prerogative, but um, the elected official did notify me that she felt very threatened by the messages. This is just from her perspective, not mine. And so I felt that Francine was not representative of me nor my district in that way. Um, nobody in this audience knows who I'm putting on the library board. You don't know where they're coming from, who their background is, what school they've worked at, what library experience they have. Right now, it's just if you're worried about stacking the board, you guys have no idea who I'm even stacking it with. So I respect everyone's opinion that came up and spoke. Um, but that's just that's from my perspective all right we had a motion and then a second so with no more discussion from the council miss raven you want to call for the vote mr Erty? yes mr coates yes mr mangus yes mr watts no mr wascom no mr taylor absent mr goff after hearing all this tonight i was going to abstain because I don't have all the information that Mr. Ryan has, the documentation that he has. Um, we discussed it today. He didn't really want to make that public because he's trying to protect all the parties involved. So it's kind of hard for me to make a decision when I don't have all the facts. But I definitely believe that this appointment is hearts in the right place. And just got real emotional probably with what's going on. So my vote is going to be no. But I will say this. I will be at the meeting and stand beside Mr. Trey because we, no more statement was better said tonight than we have a problem in our library. So I'm tasking all of y'all. And I know the one that y'all brought up and the things because I have a letter right here on that particular person and the conduct. It's got to, it's got to stop. We got to be constructive. And, and start finding solutions to these problems because what that gentleman is going to read, I'll stand right beside him, and it don't need to be in our library. Is that a no, Ricky? Yeah. Uh, you want to continue no. with the vote, Mr. Ray? <laughs> Mr. Shavers? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. All right, that motion yes. carried? All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, next item on the agenda. Appoint Shane Hernandez to the Fire Protection District number four, Mr. Shavers. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Jeff Easley's appointment um, and Shane Hernandez is going to take his, his place. I, I think I want to hold off on that. I, I've got somebody else I All need right. to talk to. All right, pull it. Item 14, Department of Public Works, Mr. Robert Dugas. First would be to approve and ratify bids for the Parish of Livingston Capital Improvements Program 2425. Robert, can you give us a quick update on what those bids are yes sir so a uh, capital that's the uh the road list y'all adopted uh, several months ago we finally got bids in um capital improvements project came in at 22.5 million um the drainage improvements came in at four and the patch program came in at 2.1 you want to name the three bidders that um it was let's see so rj daigle got both the capital improvement uh, program and the pavement patch program and it was parish drainage Gulf, was Gulf State services got the drainage is that your recommendation yes, sir. to uh, uh, approve the bids for those three yes sir. contractors to finalize that is there a motion about this board I'll make a motion motion by mr. Goff is there a second second most only once any discussion miss Raven you want to call for the vote Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Mr. Shavers? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. And, and that was for all for three, all A, three. B, and C. Okay. That's what I was going to ask that we had to do them individually. I didn't. No. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, they were, yeah, we did. Well, we procured them all. If would have failed, we would have had to do them yeah. individually. Okay. If, if all Any questions? Three. Thank y'all. Okay. okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to say I have a ring ceremony to go to, so I have to leave. So sorry, but um, for at, at Walker High, but I just want to let you know. All right, thank you, Tommy, for letting me know. Item we took up 15 already. Item 16: Adopt a resolution requiring anyone who gives public input at any public council committee or board 
appointed by the Livingston Parish Council meeting state their name and address for the record. This item was placed on by the magnificent John Mangus. Would you care yes, to talk about this? I care to elucidate. Um, what I'd like to say is that I want to make a slight change to it. Um, I looked at the state laws as far as the way the Senate and the House um, handles it, um, as well as our uh, public policies and procedures. So uh, what we would like to do is make a recommendation that the name and address is required and it will be done um, on a card. So they will turn it in. That card will be uh, public information but not disseminated without a public request, um, records request. So uh, they're allowed to state their name and just, or they're required to state their name and general area where they live. Uh, they do not have to state in front of the camera their full address, but that will be there in case it needs to be validated that they have legal standing. Um, it does not in any way, shape, or form um, prevent anyone not from this parish speaking. We're not violating public records, um, public open meetings laws. We're just saying that we value taxpayers from Livingston Parish, first and foremost. I mean, if you roll up at a gravity drainage district five and you're not even in a funded gravity, gravity drainage district, you know, your opinion is valued, but it doesn't carry as much weight as somebody who has skin in the game. Uh, so how do we word this? Um, I make a resolution that at all Livingston Parish boards, committees, councils that have members appointed by the Livingston Parish Council that they are required for public speaking to submit in writing their name and address. They can publicly say their name and what they want to say is like District 5, District 6, Denham Springs, what have you. What parish, obviously. Is that clear enough? Ladies, y'all got that? Is there a motion? Yes, that's a motion. There's a motion by Mr. Mangus. Hold on one second. Is there a second? A second. Second by Mr. Lonnie Watts. Got a quick comment? Yes. Can you make it quick, Mr. George? Mr. It's Mr. Gonzalez. Is that right, Jordan? Jordan. Gonzalez, okay. yes. Michael Jordan. I just can't play basketball. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> uh, no, so I just wanted to clarify, is this going to like be like a card system like the le state legislator has, or is it going to be like I fill out a card before the meeting and then just submit it, and then anything I want to talk about, I can still talk about raising hand situation, or is it I'm going to have to do a card for each individual thing I want to talk about? Um, I don't think it should be for each individual item. M Mr. Giroux? Turn your mic on. I would think as long as there is a submission with your name and address yeah. for that night when you're giving public input, yeah. then if you come up again on another item, you would have to fill out another card, but you would have to the identify initial. your name again so that they could coordinate with what you have on file there. Yeah, right. That would be my only concern then. Yeah. Um, but I could agree to that because my biggest concern, right, yes, is just protection of people and protection from doxing online. So. Right. And, and I don't want to make it taxing for the board members, um, also specifically onerous on the actual people speaking. Yep. Now, would this also change how, like, at the Library Control Board, they have a card system? Would this replace that card system? Or would it just add an addition? It would just add an addition to it. Okay. Um, they just, you state your address. And I'm not even stating in the resolution if it's a mailing address <laughs> or, you know. Gotcha. But. Okay. Okay, I thank you. Your time. Okay. Um, John, I got something on that. Sure, Mr. Mr. Hardy. I, I was looking here where it says, uh, highlighted here, under oath. And nobody has ever asked about being under oath. So how does that <coughs> apply to that? Are you referring to the section uh, five from the state of uh, Louisiana for their Senate and House com committee meetings? Yeah, it's what was, right. was hot handed to me a while ago earlier. Yeah, that's if, if they're witnessing um, 
in an issue, but the, still the public speaking's the same. Um, we, called, we called today, um, uh, Miss, may I say it? Am I? <laughs> Miss, yes, we called today and they said that they don't always enforce it, but it is in their records. Yes, she, well. <laughs> and tell me who that she, is. Mm, she worked, she was a clerk She's there. a clerk at so the state of Louisiana. I don't remember Louisiana. her name, yeah. but I asked because in their rules it does say they require to write down the address on the card, on the witness card, yeah. but she said that if people aren't comfortable um, giving their full address, a city and state suffice. Yeah. She, they don't require a uh, like numerical address. Yes, and, and, and I, I get that. I, I heard from a lot of people. Um, I, I think that should be required as far as for the legal record, but I, I could see the, the issue of just saying it online. But we do know in this society, you can find that out really easily. I have a question for the attorney. Isn't that your, is it your sworn testimony when you get up and you give your name and you publicly speak? No, that's not at sworn. The, at the Capitol, when you sign off on it, you're signing it and saying it's your sworn, it's that, your testimony. That's not sworn testimony. You're not under oath. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's one question. Right. My next question is, um, are we going to interfere with other boards, policies, and procedures? And do we have the jurisdiction to do that? Do, I, are we, is that I under, don't know that you? this would be... Any, any of them would have a contrary policy and procedure already in place. So if you're in giving them a parish-wide <laughs> policy that doesn't conflict with something they already have a policy for, then I think you're within your, your rights to do this. Well, that's what I'm concerned yeah. about. I've served on the Library Board of Control, for example. We have right. a big right. manual <laughs> <laughs> policy and procedure, and so. If there's something in a policy and procedure manual for speaking at uh, a board meeting and what's required before you can speak, then in that very peculiarized situation, then it may be an issue, but I would be really surprised, even with something okay. that was a big old policy procedure that there's something so uh, finite or, or, or minute in there talking about when someone cuts up to give a comment, they have to give their address and name first. I just. Okay, uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. I appreciate it. Uh, we have a comment from Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Tom. We had a comment from the audience. I believe Ms. Marla Elsie. Yes, Marla Elsie. Just a comment and a question. One is that the library board's policy just says you have to state your name and parish, just as an FYI. Um, question If it goes onto a card system um, and it's on the card and there's a public records request, would it be redacted? No, because no, that's no, common no. elsewhere to redact addresses. It, it is very difficult. Turn your mic on there. Thank you. It is very difficult to do a public records request, and, and there's some costs incurred. Um, I really don't think that would be that, that much of a burden. Uh, but it's not, we're not giving it out, and that board member shouldn't give it out. Uh, just to say, and, and I do appreciate very much what you're saying, but uh, I received copious emails um, and everybody who emailed me except for one person put their name and address and so we're really not asking anything more than what's normally done in normal conventions uh, I think it's understandable with the the fear not fear uh, how do you say it, the safety issue yeah yeah I was just checking because you were talking about what's normal. It is common elsewhere to redact the addresses when there's a public record request. So I was just checking. Um, Ms. Elsie, I just uh, heard from the state on this and I would like to read it to you and okay. to everybody for the sake of state cards are testimony under penalty of perjury because they are signed. The state, the state redacts contact number and address for public records. Thank you. Oh, That's, there you so, go. Yeah. State trumps us. So, yeah. Yep. All right, thank you. So it would be redacted. We could. So we could. It, 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 the, the main reason is not to be difficult to anybody. And, and if John, uh, Mr. Wascom, may I just? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, not any, everybody by any means, but uh, I was given a lot of grief, as, as Ms. Smith said earlier, with people emailing and calling 
Not you, ma'am. That was very pleasant, actually. Um, and they said that I was trying to stop freedom of speech, that I would kill freedom of speech in Livingston Parish with this. And so that made me think. And then I thought about it. And <laughs> Sorry, I said That's I wouldn't okay. do it, but I'm going to do it. That's all right. Go ahead, John. The, the greatest document on man wrote, not God wrote, man wrote on freedoms and unalienable rights is Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence. And I'll picture that in your head for a second. What is at the bottom of that document? John Hancock. John Hancock. To this day, we say that. He wrote it so large so old King George could see it all the way in England. If we are asking, if, if the new definition of freedom of speech is anonymity, the only people that do things in anonymity are bad actors. Think about it. They wear hoods. They wear masks. They attack. They assault. You know, if you're, if you're going to speak publicly, there has to be different rules. That, and that, that's just my opinion. And that's why it's a resolution and not an ordinance. We, we want to be that shining light on a hill. Um, we want to be able to hear viewpoints like Mr. Gonzalez, um, like your viewpoints. So that's why I made it. I, we had a motion by Mr. Mangus, second by Mr. Watts, I believe. <laughs> Didn't you second that, Lonnie? You wish you wouldn't have now? Or you <laughs> so, so just so I, I understand the motion again is that we're going to basically require the people when they come up to state their name, the parish that they're in. Uh, there will be a card on the table to write for, their address for them to be able to write their address and give it to the council clerk, and that will become uh, part of the record that may or may not be in part of the minutes. That's, is that right? Is that what I understand? Okay, I think the question was, do we have a policy and procedure? We made? have a policy and procedure adopted right now that we use those cards. To use those cards, and we're not doing that. So okay. We could just enforce okay, what we already well, have. Okay. Well, this would just kind of. This send it to the boards. Yes. Okay. So would you We're just sending it to the board. Turn your mic on there, John. We're just okay. sending it to the boards and, and commissions. commissions. Yes, ma'am. Um, that, that's it. It's, it's, um, it's just what's right. Uh, if you've seen what I've done, I have not done ordinances. I've done housekeeping motion since I got here. I've tried to get, get us in order. We send things to committees. Um, I, I've tried to do things right and proper and, and established best practices. Freedom of speech is a best practice. Well, I uh, had a motion in a second then. No more, any more comments from the council. You know, I came in here tonight. My mind was made up. I was voting against this because I got call calls about people that were concerned about the safety. They didn't want to give their address. And I understand that. I mean, if you have a single parent or children, I get that. And, you know, I don't know. John's just, he's a thinker and he's a very good articulator. And I think he did a good job. And the mere fact that we're not going to have them announce their address publicly, but write it on the card. And like Ms. Sanford said, it could be redacted or blacked out for those that wasn't sure what that word meant and, and also it is extremely important sometimes when somebody speaks we need a record of that because we do hear you we are listening and sometimes we want to contact you and if we don't have a way of knowing who you are or where you live then we can't contact you and I have run into that situation after a town hall meeting and thank goodness I had a sign-in sheet and I'll, I'll, I'll stop with this last thing as I, I told John anybody that I can think of that has made a difference in life. The people that have come and gone from the presidents to the movers and shakers, people that have made a difference, have always put their name out and given their address. So, you know, if you're really going to make a difference, make the difference. So, we had a motion in a second. And can you add to that, to, uh, since we already have that policy in place, just to say, as per our policy? Yes, we'll disseminate it to the boards as okay. per the already approved policy. So you want to call for the vote, Ms. Yeah. Raven? Oh, so we're sending out our policy and procedure to all boards, commissions, 
of the parish and yes and give it, credit where credit's due uh, I, I believe it was jeff ard when he was the yes. chairman who did that so okay you want to call for the vote yeah. mr Ardy. Ardy. yes mr coates yes mr mangus yes mr watts yes mr wascom yes mr golf yes miss sandifer yes passed passes unanimous yeah I, I was gonna vote against it my mind was made up uh, thank you Miss Aaron for looking uh, getting the state attorney to get back with you on, on it that okay the state you told you Mike well it was in LA, okay. an, a leg, uh, an a legislative assistant that texted well, in thank you for that I appreciate uh, it uh, mr. Billy Taylor has on the agenda adopt a resolution to add the following roads to the party list uh, Brown Pelican Street Blue Heron Street White Egret Street Red Cardinal Street and Golden Eagle Street he's not here but I, he hadn't spoken to me does anyone want to make a motion to move forward with this on behalf of mr. Billy Taylor I'll make a motion Motion by mr. Ricky I'll Goff. second, second by mr. Aaron Sander for any discussion all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Before we get into committee reports, we have an item that came to me uh, just before the meeting. Every year we adopt a resolution. It's to adopt the annual certification of compliance with the state of Louisiana off system bridge replacement program for the period of one year. This is a, a program that the state has. They come out and inspect our bridges, do repairs and maintenance. Uh, but we have to submit that, that list of our roads and bridges, or the, those bridges, I believe, to the uh, roads and bridges to the, uh, to the state. The problem was it didn't make it to our office in time because just because of it just it got missed because people were just busy but um it's kind of under a timeline so for us to add this we would need to add it to the agenda and to do that we need to lift the agenda to lift the agenda we have to have a unanimous vote if one person doesn't do it we it, it won't happen so i think it's it, it's a pretty simple forward uh just send, send in these roads list streets to the state so they could do it so is there a motion to lift the agenda to pick this item up mr mangus makes the motion Second by Mr. Watts. Any discussion? You want to call for the vote? Mr. Artie? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Ms. Andifer? Yes. That motion carried. The item is now lifted to the agenda. Is there a motion to send? Uh, you know what it is. Adopt the annual certification of compliance with State of Louisiana Bridge Replacement Program for the period of October 21st, September 30th through 25th. Establish the load limits on bridges within the off system bridge program and post said limits as market exhibit A. Motion by Mr. Mangus. Second by Mr. Dean Coates. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carried unanimous. All right. Go back into regular. Make a meeting. motion to go back to the agenda. Motion back to the regular agenda by Mr. Golf, second by Mr. Mangus. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? We're back. Uh, let's. Uh, bef okay, go ahead. Let's go do committee reports, finance committee, Mr. Mangus. Okay. Uh, we, we had a lot with the finance committee. Um, Mr. Mickey McMorris. Can you come up and state your name and GPS <laughs> coordinates? <laughs> I already stated my name and address earlier. For, for the record, sir, it's, it's for posterity's sake. Yeah. Mickey Thank McMorris, um, 33723 Beverly Drive, Denham Springs, uh, finance director. Is that good enough? What we discussed uh, was that we were going to, um, you had asked your department uh, I'm going to go probably in reverse order. Uh, the Falk and Winkler um, CPA firm that uh, they did over $125,000 of work um, and with a $70,000 um, contract, and they asked for an additional $27,000. And you said they had that in the budget. That is correct. Okay. You you need me to comment any on it? I mean, it was basically they did an extensive amount of work right and it had been approved for um, somewhere close to 70,000 for that audit and he the man hours he put in it was um, about 125,000 so he's asking for 27,000 more dollars just to to help him out he didn't want to be I don't 
it's, if we that's already them. in the budget, we probably yeah, don't need a motion. Budget, well, it's not. We have exceeded the budget on that. I mean, I would feel but if it's a, um, if it's a overage or whatever. We, it's more than what was budgeted, is what you're saying? Yes. And it'll come out of the 24 budget, correct? Yes. I so, make a motion that we approve the additional expenditure. I second. All right, second by Mr. Mangus, motion by Mr. Goff. Any discussion? You want to call for the vote, Ms. Raven? Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Goff? Yes. Ms. Sandifer? Yes. Pass. All right. Okay, uh, the next thing. The next thing we uh, had on that was the um, the new system for payment. We have uh, over 130 employees in the parish, and they've been using a system since 2007. Yes. Right, and that system, although it is cheaper, it requires an excessive amount of labor, um, and it's very difficult to determine overtime and. It's very limited. Yes. This is, this is payroll. So we're proposing, and this will be for 25 expenditures, um, but we have to get started now. Right, because um, it's got to go into effect January 1st. Yes. And it so, will cost, uh, it's Paycor, I think everybody's got a copy of it. Yes. The company, um, and it's 19000 Yes. So that won't be in the 24 budget. That'll be in the 25 that budget. That will be the 25 budget. So you don't need a motion for that. You'll just put that in the budget. Then we'll adopt that. Yeah, but to sign the contract, I need. Um, oh, the authorization to yeah. sign that contract. Yeah, it's a contract that they they want. Can we, can we adopt it at the next meeting? Here you go. Yeah, when, yeah I know. It's when does it need to be adopted? Well, I mean, we we on a tight schedule. Um, we we could miss the window. When is the deadline? I, mean, I, I hate to. I mean. I, I didn't think this was controversial, but it's uh, not. It's, it's not. You know, it's it, not. And, and, we and just want to read know it. Ryan, Ryan in the past had, you know, he complained about getting it the day of, and um, I mean, this, it, I, I think nineteen thousand dollars a no-brainer on this one. Um, it's just we, every payroll, we have issues. So I just with all with all due respect, oh, I'm, I'm not, not trying to, you know, it's I just got this in the finance meeting. I haven't even yeah. had a chance to unpack it and it is a contract. And I would like to read it if that's okay. I'm not trying sure. to, you know. I think that would be wise. Miss uh, Sandy, do we, do we have enough time to I mean, does it have to be done? Okay. Yeah, no, okay. All right. What is the deadline? Mr. Hooter, you had, you had a question? Greetings. David What's your Hooter. name and address? My address is 26735 LA Highway 444 Springfield. What is before you is a great opportunity. Um, not only does it do payroll, it also does all the benefits. It does all the onboarding. It does everything. Our system is aging. It's failing. It's, it's on lifeline almost. Every pay period we have an issue. Some people are not getting small things they need, some things this and that. We engaged, I initiated a uh, conversation with a company and we started searching. This is uh, a company that basically has shrunk their cost for us drastically to get their services. And they gave us great discounts, but the timeline is dwindling awful quick. Uh, I agree. Y'all need to look at it. I'm with that. What is the deadline I'm uh, looking for? Well, we have to have the system built in place and in, enforced by January 1. Okay. So if we dilly anymore, they're not going to have enough time to get started. And this is a great system. In my opinion, I want y'all to vet it. I, I'm 100%. Y'all need to look at it if you feel you need. But we're fixing to uh, run ourselves into a situation that is going to jeopardize each employee. And we have more than just 130 that we take care of. Is there a motion? Close to 225. I believe. Thank you. Was there a motion? Is there a motion? No, we did. We, we, no, there's not. No, we haven't. I, w I want to make a motion to defer this to the next meeting. All right. Will that give your, Mr. Delight? Will that give you uh, time? I mean, two I, weeks. We just got it. Yeah. It, Y'all can do what you need to do, guys. This is part of the transparency. This is a professional contract. The procedure is that it goes to Mr. Moody first, okay? Mr. Moody's got to okay the contract. We bring it back here for you to 
have your say just so you can say something. Really, you have, even if you were to say no, you have no jurisdiction on a professional contract. We're just trying to bring the stuff up here and give you the information. And I love to see the council and the parish executive staff get together for a day of understanding what each other's responsibilities and duties are. The reason they make professional contracts and that be administration, which is a state law, is because it's the same thing with the governor or anybody else. The day-to-day -day activities, we can't wait sometimes for two weeks or a month or six weeks, or maybe you may not even agree with the contract. There's certain contracts you do get to, to agree on, but those are not, this is a professional contract that's underneath the minimum amount of money that's required. But we did bring it up here for your information. You do what you want to do. Uh, you still want to have your motion? Yeah. Motion by Ms. Sandifer to defer. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Joe Erty, any more discussion? Ms. Raven, you want to call for the vote? Or oh, Ms. Caroline, you want to call for the Sorry. vote? Sorry. Mr. Erty? Yes. Mr. Coates? Yes. Mr. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Watts? Mr. Wascom? No. Mr. Groff? No. No. Okay. All right, so that motion. And Ms. Sandifer. Oh. Uh, to defer it. To defer, yes. All right, so that motion will be deferred to the next council meeting. Uh, is there anything else on the finance committee, John? Um, I, think, I think that was it. Artist committee. Um, oh, we, we did say about the budget, but uh, that is going to be submitted. Um, was it no? December fifth. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Artist committee, Mr. Coates. Ordinance committee. We did not have one. We didn't have any ordinances brought forward. Uh, if there are any brought forward in the future, just look at the council website, and we'll let them know and send out the emailers whenever uh, we, we schedule our next one. All right. The only thing that we have to be adjourned, but I do have one quick thing on I want. Comments. Pardon? I got some comments. Oh, did you have a comment? <laughs> Ms. Sanford has a comment. No, I just, I wanted to let everyone know that uh, the Parish Planning Commission adopted a resolution among themselves asking that, uh, that they take no zoning changes or, or applications for any zoning changes until February the 1st of 2025 until they get their zoning in they're just they're just asked let, letting us know they'd like to do that so uh i don't really think there's any action taken from the board so all i'm saying is unless there's something really pushing they're just saying they don't want us to bring any uh zoning request changes to them until february 2025. so i mean we, we don't have to take action on it. i'm just letting y'all know that miss Stanford, you yes. had a comment okay so this sunday is an exciting day in um, District 5. Sunday, October 27th, everybody is invited. The, there's two events going on at South Park. In, I, the first one is jamming in the park. I'm going to read you the graphic. Um, the park has pickleball installed, so they're going to have pickleball distractions. Uh, I'm giving there's a, a what? A pickleball. Pick, yeah, you like pickleball. I'm the champion of pickleball. Um, I challenge anybody, by the way. They are, they are, they're going to have food trucks Ladies on site. It's a family event. I think bands are playing. So that will wind down at 6 o'clock. And at 6 o'clock, Trunk or Treat starts. South Park Trunk or Treat at, from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, we have some really awesome prizes. For the top three trunks, we have prizes for the children's, each individual age group, um, cost, best costumes. There's um, quite a few surprises this year. It's supposed to be a pretty big event, and so I hope you can make it. There's free hot dogs and drinks and um, lots of family fun. Ms. Sanford, thank you so much, and I, I hope I don't get challenged in pickleball. Uh, Mr. Mangus, you had a comment. Uh, Yes, uh, this uh, weekend, um, starting tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday, is Immaculate Conception's Fall Festival. Please come out. It's um, our biggest fundraiser of the year. Uh, good time had by all. Looking forward to, to seeing anybody at that. So that's uh, at, right there on Hatchell, Immaculate Conception. Ricky, I'm not giving you the microphone. <laughs> Hey, I, I just push it. <laughs> okay, um, go ahead. 
I, w I just wanted to recognize the uh, assessor, their group, parish president, and Miss Sandy in reference to getting this little glitch of the 1.5, reducing the millage down to 1.5 for the health unit. It took a lot of effort, a lot of phone calls, a lot of back and forth, and that thing had to be signed tonight, handed to the assessor, and the assessor will take it to the state tomorrow. So uh, it was good collaborative effort, and I just want every one of those to know that I appreciate it. Mr. Watts, you have anything? Uh, Mr. Coates, Mr. Hardy? Yeah, I was thinking about challenging you. Oh, okay. <laughs> we might can make a fundraiser out of it. <laughs> Ms. Do Ms. Linda Gardner, you want to come to the podium? Thank you. Linda Gardner, 31048 Ambassador Drive, Independence, and I do live in Livingston Parish. I just live really far out. This Saturday at our DPW office, we are having a free drop-off your tire day. We are paying for the tires that have to go to be um, recycled. That's why we have them all over the parish. Don't you guys see them in the ditches? Yes. So we're going to do that. So they can bring up to four. Limit really is five. So, you know, we probably will let them push the five. That's by law, DEQ. And we got a grant from Keep Louisiana Beautiful for $3,500 to help us to pay to have those tires taken away. We also have our detention center that goes out two or three days a week and they pick up tires for us too. So there's a whole pile of them right now that we will be discarding. And I just wanted the public to know there's all kinds of things on social media, but I wanted the council members to know that if you're interested, you can come out and visit with us for an hour or two and help us out and volunteer if you'd like to. I don't think it's going to be as big as our dump day, but I think it's just going to be as successful as what we, we did back in April. It's only going to be from 8 to 12. Um, so we're Linda, just, yes. Did, are the tires that we had picked the up? The tires on Harris Willie Road. Gone? On Harris Willie Road, the tires are gone, thanks to Mr. Randy DeLatter, parish president. Okay. And those tires will be recycled in that a portion that we're doing on saturday That's that cool. was over 120 something is that what it came to on account yes on we have i have the count i know i knew it was plenty yeah it was and that and i also posted that harris willie road on face on our facebook page and it's it's beautiful and then we have our signs up that say no dumping and we also have our signs up that says please don't litter i drove out the other day and it's been over a month since they've been picked up and it still looks really beautiful so let's hope that continues to happen thank you for all of your hard work you're and, welcome and, and maybe no one will take tires and burn them in the parish so you know. <laughs> I know that's happened in the past. Lonnie? Miss Linda, uh, yes. just to clarify something on these tires, that's without rims. Up without that. rims, yes. Right. It does say yeah. that in our flyer. No rims. Correct. And it's going to be, um, most of it's going to be your car tires. And if it's like small truck, but they're, they're going to be about the same size. We're not taking anything uh, bigger than that. And this will keep people from throwing them into the river. I think that's a great thing. Right. And this is our award that. And you want to tell us about that? Um, Mr. Randy did mention it. Um, this is we've got we got the affiliate of the year award. That's the highest award any affiliate, which we have 54 affiliates, and we keep Livingston beautiful received that award today, and it was a great honor to have uh, Ms. Sanderford there as a council. Plus, she's a board member of Keith Livingston, uh, Livingston Parish Beautiful. We had our parish president there. We had almost everyone in the room over here, there with all our board members. And it was um, very overwhelming. And we also got the Center of Excellence Award for 2024. And that award, you have to do a lot to work for these things. So it's not something they just give you. So you have to do a lot of work. And this parish government is committed to litter and to the abatement in this area and also for beautification and it's my commitment to this parish to do the best job that i can do with the help and support from each of you in the parish citizens thank you thank you 
Mr. Jimmy, you had yeah. some? Yes, uh, President Jimmy. asked me to get up and kind of uh, reiterate. Um, again, it's the Outstanding Community Affiliate Award, and um, uh, she has done an outstanding job. She's gone uh, uh, above Mr. And beyond. Gilbert, what is your address, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Jim Gilbert, 238 North College Street East. It's going to be a problem. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> we were all honored to be there. I'm going to tell you what, there was a there were a, a lot of uh, uh, really impressive people uh, that were up for this award, and I'm I'm really proud of Miss Linda for everything she's done and in, in the uh, community and, and and for us, not the uh, hard work she puts forward. And um, anyway, I was hoping maybe I might want to get out here and take a picture with her with her award. We got some other pictures, I'm sure. Uh -huh. uh, Brandon's going to put on, on on Facebook. We took some. With her and the staff, and, and her and the president. So, anyway, thank you for coming. You, you want to do that? I make a motion to adjourn, and then we'll do the photo. Is there a second? I second. All right, we had a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mangus, second by Mr. Joe Erdy. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I declare this meeting adjourned.